Hello, friends, and welcome back to another Sunday special. I'm back to take a look at the markets with you, and uh, hopefully you are ready for some technical analysis and some fundamental analysis going into the week ahead. Now, each week, what I do is I go through a set of markets uh, that I am personally watching and talk about trade setups that I am looking for. I've been trading for five, almost six years now. My birthday's coming up. Um, and so I am. Uh, this is something I've been doing consistently on YouTube for about two years now. Uh, and what we're going to be doing, like I said, is we're going to go through some charts. We're going to talk about setups and ideas uh, and see if there's anything that could be a profitable setup for the week ahead. Now, with that said, please remember, these are my thoughts and opinions. I can be wrong and I am wrong uh, regularly when it comes to trading. It is more about catching good moves uh, and letting them run if they happen and stopping out quickly for me uh, to keep things controlled. So with that said, we've got a bunch of things to look at. So let's jump into it. Uh, a couple things on the radar. We've got USD strength in the uh, the questionable zone, right? We're going to see, we're going to take a look at some dollar movements that happened last week, see if that is set to continue. We're going to take a look at the yen uh, on a couple different currencies, see how the yen is doing. The yen has been very, very weak and uh, we've seen a little bit of a pullback there situation. So we're going to go check up on some yen weakness. There may be some setups that we could look at for trading the yen. And then of course, we'll take a look at gold because gold uh, has made some interesting moves recently. We're going to talk about whether or not I think it could break out here. And then finally, we're going to talk about some news that is coming this upcoming week. So again, we'll start with USD strength. But before I do that, real quick, you guys, I'm super excited about this. It is our official Black Friday sale. We're starting today just because uh, it is Halloween and I love Halloween. So uh, we're going to do the Black Friday sale starting now. So for the month of November, you're going to get 40% off of our gold VIP. Now, this is something that we do very infrequently. In, in fact, this is the absolute best sale number that you're going to get for the gold membership all year. 40% off. What you get access to is all of the trade alerts being signal, uh, signaled by myself and our other top traders. We have Patrick from Germany. We have Ivan as an, uh, a VIP uh, webinar hoster, right? He does webinars throughout the week talking about setups and ideas and strategies and answering questions. You can see all the strategies that are being shared. Uh, and then you also have access to the MT4 tools that our development team has put together. So you get access to things like the A1 trend scanner, you get access to the grandmaster, and you get our live chat, which is around the clock active full of members. So with that said, if any of that sounds interesting to you, again, you can see the trades that I'm taking. We're going to take a look at some of the trades that I'm looking at this week in just a second. And then I'm going to show you a trade that I'm actually in. But uh, every trade that gets sent out, whether it is a winner or a loser, I share with full breakdowns and analysis. What we'll do actually is just to give you some context, just so you can see what I'm talking about here. So this is the group. So when you, when you uh, get access to the Black Friday sale price, you're going to get into this group and you'll be able to see all the trades that are being shared by myself, by Patrick, by Ryan. We have research put together each week by some of our analysts. We have coaching webinars throughout the week so you can jump in a Zoom call and ask your questions. We have an ed educational portal where you can read up on the strategies that I am using as well as some of our other traders. Uh, we have software tool downloads for VIP gold members. So again, all of this, I, I'm, I know I'm, I'm coming at you heavy with it today, but the reason I'm doing that is because this really is, if you've been like on the sidelines waiting to join our group, there is no better price that you're going to get all year for the gold membership. So again, all those perks come with the membership and we are super excited to welcome new traders here for our Black Friday sale. So I hope to see some of you guys in here. Now there's all that information is down below in the description. Just go down there. There's a link to sign up on our website. And if you use the promo code, that's how you're going to get that 40% off sale price. So check it out down below. And without further ado, let's now take a look at some of the setups. Uh, I will come back to this dollar yen trade. So this is my dollar yen trade that I ended up uh, picking up last week, shared it inside of the group with members. And uh, so far, it's doing well. We'll take a look at it in just a second. Let's take a look at USDCHF just to start. Uh, again, we're, we're going to start off thinking about dollar strength. Is the dollar still strong? Is it still worth uh, going long on, looking for those setups? Well, let's look at daily chart just for a quick second here. And, uh, you know, to be fair here, we have sort of changed the structure on dollar Swiss, right? We had this, this upward trajectory, and now it seems like we broke out, we retested, we came lower. Um, so I'm going to just say that I'm not necessarily bearish on dollar Swiss, but dollar Swiss would not be my favorite of the of the pairs to trade. You can actually see all my orders going in and out of the, uh, the from my broker here, and you can actually see that uh, I was trading quite a bit over here. It took a lot of long setups and actually made some good money on that. All those were shared in the Discord. Uh, but then I've sort of hesitated 
rotated since we saw that change in structure uh, from going long there. However, we'll take a look now at dollar yen. So dollar yen is the one that I'm currently trading right now. So there you go. Uh, there's one of the trades that is shared inside of the Discord. So I took a trade here, closed it here. Uh, of course, I wish I had caught the full move here, but uh, sometimes it doesn't happen that way. So I missed that one. Um, also, I don't know why I have that uh, alert there. I don't need that alert there. Uh, but anyways, dollar yen, I am still very bullish on. I think it has potential to continue this upward move. And going back to our original radar concept of you know yen strength, yen weakness, that sort of thing, right? Um, when we look at the yen here, you can see that the yen has just been getting beat right over and over. It's just been having a real tough time. So at the 38.2, I actually decided to jump in. I drew from the swing low here to the high point up here. And sure enough, we got the follow through fairly quickly. So here's the four hour view. I'll zoom in just so you can see this. So the setup for this trade was, uh, from a technical analysis standpoint, overall trend is just very, very strong, right? You've got lots of bullishness. Every dip seems to get bought. So I decided, okay, I like this area of support, right? So let me mark this. So I liked this consolidation here. I liked the area here where we had a little bit of a bounce and uh, the 38.2% retracement adds another level of confluence to that upward trend continuation entry. So I ended up taking the trade. Uh, I put my stop loss initially down just below structure. So I wasn't risking too much. And uh, of course, now you can see my stop loss. I'm up $105, but then I've also got my stop loss locked into a break-even position. So if dollar yen comes crashing down next week or this week, I guess, um, I'm still not going to get you know obliterated or anything like that. I'm just going to take a break-even trade. So uh, for those of you guys who are already members, just keep an eye on my trade alert section in Discord and you'll see any updates that I make. But the big thing that I liked here was check this out. So we had this trend line um, drawn earlier on in the week. I actually talked about this on Friday's live stream. So we had this trend line where we were putting in this lower high. And the question was, yes, I liked this area, but could we get above that area for a potential signal that maybe we're headed back up to the previous high? So we did get the breakout. And I loved this candle. Seeing that on Friday was awesome. For those of you guys who are trading dollar yen, again, that breakout looked pretty clean. We got the move. And now towards the end of Friday, we got the, the back test or the retest of that trend line. So to me, I think that path of least resistance here for dollar yen is to the upside, right? We have an overall upward trend. We have a breakout there on Friday. We had a nice progressive move off of the low. Uh, so for me, I think that pricing here towards the upside is path of least resistance. So again, that's a couple, a couple different factors. One thing I'll share really quick with that is that I did include a fundamental bullish uh, outlook on why I am bullish on the dollar. I've been talking about that for members in the group, but I said I'm bullish on the dollar as mentioned in the previous posts, which I've been talking about a lot. But um, overall recovery, Fed pushing towards tightening the monetary policy here in the US. The tapering process is still on the doorstep. And then of course, I've been bearish on the yen, which we talked about as something we're focused on this week, um, bearish on the yen, as mentioned in previous posts around their lagging monetary policy, the overall risk on environment that we're in right now, uh, which really does favor the uh, the other currencies like uh, the GBP and the AUD and things like that, right? People tend to uh, go towards the riskier currencies when things are, when there's higher risk appetite, right? Think about risk on being, well, the turn the risk knob on, right? And then when things are scary, turn it off, right? So that would be going to buy the yen, which could cause uh, this chart to go down, right? Because people would be selling the dollar, buying the yen. Remember when we trade currency pairs, we're always trading two currencies at once. So we have to think, which one are we long? Which one are we short at any given time? So from a fundamental perspective, I think this thing continues higher. Uh, I have been bullish and I'm looking to see if we can get the follow through here going into this week. So again, break even on the trade. We'll see where it goes from there. EURUSD is the next one. I love EURUSD to the short side, but it looks like I may have missed the most recent opportunity. You can see uh, I ended up taking a short here inside of the group, covered around somewhere here, right? Ended up reshorting up in this area uh, and then ended up covering for break even, which I'm glad I did because price spiked way further up and then now came back down. So I guess if I had hindsight on my side, I could have just shoulda, coulda, woulda just held it uh, through all of that and be in profit. But of course, I am not a genie. I'm a trader. And my goal is not to try and predict the market's every move, but rather to manage my risk, set up trades that make the most sense and 
ride them out, right? Be patient. So uh, going into this week with EURUSD, a couple things to think about. So I am bearish on this currency pair quite a bit from a couple different reasons. Uh, USD strength being one of them, right? So we've talked about I am bullish on the USD, but I'm also actually bearish on the euro. So I am bearish on the euro. So I'm looking to short the euro and buy the dollar. And part of the reason behind that is that, okay, uh, the euro area in terms of monetary policy, that's a big thing that I look at. Uh, monetary policy, they're very much lagging, right? They have not slowed down on their stimulus, uh, whereas other places like the US, uh, we're actively trying to begin that tapering process and to reduce the government spending uh, post-pandemic, right? Well, Europe is not quite in that place. Now, that is just to say that if that's the case, if we've got EU here and the US is becoming more, the dollar is becoming more bullish, uh, in my view, due to the fact that, again, we're printing less money. When you print less money, what does that do? It causes the currency to be stronger. Uh, if you print way more money, if you inflate the currency, it causes the currency to go down, right? So if this one is printing a lot and this one is not printing a lot, I personally, that's just a, a simple, simplified version of it, but I'd personally prefer to be looking more likely to be short on this currency and long on this one. So uh, that's where I'm at with the Euro USD. A couple areas of interest for me going into this week. Of course, this previous resistance point could be interesting for a back test. Uh, we could grab this and go here. Look at that 38.2 pretty clean entry in my opinion. If you're looking to get short on the Euro USD, now please remember this is not me telling you what to do with your money. This is just me sharing my personal opinions on the market. But um, I like that area personally for a possible sell. Uh, maybe I'll keep an eye on that. If I take that trade, if I enter the trade, I'll, I'll explain the full details in the VIP Discord. So uh, stay tuned on that in the trade alert section for those of you guys who are already in there. We'll keep going. We'll take a look now at, uh, let's take a look at, uh, do we look at, we looked at dollar yen, we looked at euro dollar, dollar Swiss. Let's take a look at gold. We'll take a look at XAU USD to see what's going on here. We're going to start fresh on the gold market. Now, gold did something pretty big on Friday. Check this out. So on Friday, gold made a breakout, made a pretty significant break to the downside. Now it's been marching up since, you know, this, this point here. So we have seen the gold buyers do a pretty impressive push, but I want to just add some context to this. If we scroll out, like if we look at the daily chart, this thing is still kind of in a downtrend, right? It really hasn't shown that long-term appetite for upward trajectory, right? We've really seen this thing continuous, uh, continuously getting beaten down or just sent into a range market like we've seen for the last, really the last several months if you're looking at the daily chart, right? So um, going into this week particularly, Something interesting happened there towards the end of uh, last week that could carry over into this week. We had a breakout of this trend line. So yes, we were trending higher throughout the week, making progress. But in one or one day, one and a half days, we saw this thing just go boop right through the trend line there. And so I think that um, it is very possible that if dollar strength continues, remember when we are looking at any pair, we are looking to go long on one and short on the other. So in this case gold and the dollar. If the dollar gets really strong, which it does seem like it has been doing and could potentially do this week, if you think the dollar is strong, gold may come down further, right? We may see this level reject. We may see prices make a continued movement lower. And maybe we start to see this trend line come into play, right? You Where you see that uh, rejection in this area and, and possibly we are seeing on uh, developing kind of that newer stage uh, downtrend here. So keep an eye on that. If you're watching gold this week, um, gold will probably be crazy because we do actually have some news to talk about. So let's take a look at this. Uh, we do have a, quite a few red folders and we're ending the week, you guys, with big news. We've got the NFP uh, release, which is likely going to be a very market moving uh, situation because a lot of people are going to be focused on this stuff right here. What's the unemployment in the U.S. looking like? That's going to set the tone for the dollar for the next few weeks. So we will definitely be watching that live stream. I want to encourage you right now, if you're new to the channel, subscribe down below and hit that like button. If you're getting value out of this, if this is something that's being helpful to you, hit that subscribe button. We've got tons of stuff for you here. And we're going to be live streaming for this event. So I want to encourage you to hit the notification bell so that you get notified whenever I go live. But anyways, um, got a whole bunch of things. We've got some uh, some Aussie red folders, uh, folders the cash rate, uh, unemployment rate in, in New Zealand. 
You've got some stuff for the U.S., more FOMC statements. We've got a whole bunch on Wednesday, so the dollar is going to be big, big mover on Wednesday and on Friday. So I would call this an action-packed week. Uh, this is definitely the right time to join the group if you're looking to jump in on some things with us, uh, You know, jumping into the chat room and getting involved in the Forex community. This is probably the best week that you're going to get to do that. So Plus, you've got the best uh, price because of our Black Friday sale. So again, tons of stuff there available to see our trade alerts this week. So if we take any trades this week, you'll see them. Uh, you get access to our coaching calls where we're going to probably be answering some questions and talking about strategies and all sorts of good stuff. We actually have Ivan from A1 Trading uh, joining us to do our webinar starting this week, which is really, really exciting. And uh, everything else that you see on the screen. Again, 40% off. Link is down below in the description. I'm going to keep talking about it because, again, it's, our, it's the best sale of the year. And we always get people who are like, Oh man, Nick, I missed the sale. What, where, how did I get it? And this is your chance. Like I said, this is, if you've been meaning to join us in discord, best chance of the year, 40% off code is down below in the description. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll head back over to the chart here for a second and, uh, see what we can do. So with gold, like I said, uh, I think that that breakout was pretty, pretty strong for sellers. That was a pretty indicative move of, uh, you know, maybe this is a little bit of a tired, uh, tired push, right? You had sort of that head and shoulders and then the breakout to the up underside. So maybe, maybe we see more follow through on gold this week, just as kind of like a pullback after all this run up. Um, but again, the, the grand scheme of things, gold's really range bound, right? It's really range bound. 1830 has been a big barrier for sellers. Uh, to hold over and over. Now, we didn't quite even get there this last week. We actually, uh, we were looking like we were headed up and then we dropped like a rock. So again, um, we'll keep tabs on gold. I'd be much more interested in buying gold if we saw something bearish come into the dollar, which again, we may see this week. We'll have to see what the news carries. Uh, but if we were to see something like that, you know, that case, much more interesting for me to look for a gold breakout. And the reason I point that out is 1830, because we had such such big rejection multiple times there, a big break to the upside through that level would be incredibly, incredibly uh, possible to, to, to make a, a big, incredible move to the upside, right? Uh, you get those longer term breakouts, they can lead to big terms, uh, Big term sellers covering their positions, or big buyers jumping in and riding the uh, the curtails of the of the move. So, I don't know. We will definitely keep an eye on uh, gold going into this next week. So, stay tuned for that inside of the live streams and for those of you guys who are in the Discord. So, we'll keep moving on. Uh, so, there is your gold move. Um, Let's see what else we could talk about. We could talk about pound yen for a moment. So we'll take a look at GBP, JPY, speaking more on yen weakness. Question is, um, you know, where does this thing go, right? Because you have uh, seen this thing really rocket up and now we're seeing a little bit of a, a slow pullback. So we could draw our, our, a little trend line here. And uh, if we wanted to just mirror that just for simplicity's sake, we could put it right there. So we've kind of been trending back down now, uh, but I think that the grand scheme of things is still very bullish here on pound yen, but we're a little bit of ways away from the 38.2. So I like the idea possibly of maybe bottom the, buying the bottom of this channel should we make our way down there. Uh, I definitely prefer the pound over the yen and think that this could be a reasonable setup to look for, you know, that sweet spot to carry us back up to the top. And maybe even uh, if things really get strong, if the, if the longer term trend carries a move back up to this point. So kind of my my cookie cutter setup is looking for that that huge run up for the pullback to 38.2 or 50 percent depending on structure and, uh, you know, lining it up with the fundamentals. If the fundamentals make sense, that's you know, pretty much where I'm looking to to take advantage of my best setups, let things run, trail stops, things like that. You guys see it on the live trading videos on my channel, probably on, on the regular. So uh, you, you've seen kind of the way I trade if you watch those. Uh, so again, I like the little, uh, little flag looking pattern, right? Maybe a move back down to that 38.2. Going to try and be patient there on pound yen. I will set an alert just for, uh, just for convenience sake. We'll just do right there in case things come down to that zone. We could get an alert on pound yen. Uh, let's take a look real quick at AUD USD. Uh, very strong to the upside. If you're looking to be a buyer here, there may be some action going into this week. Um, now I would watch if you're, if you're bearish, right? If you're first thing I'll say is that if you're a bear on the Aussie currency pairs, keep an eye on this trend line, because if this thing breaks, that could be your sort of entry, right? Uh, if you're, 
depending on what style of trading you do, of course. But, you know, let's say that we get a little break of support because we do have some support both for the buyers to consider and the shorts to look at, right? You do have this area and this area. So let's say we were to see a big red candle, right? Something like that going into the week. Then you get the retest, something like that. Yeah, that could make sense for possible shorts, right? That would be the only scenario from a technical perspective of how I would like to short something that is overall trending up right is to wait for a signal of weakness and to try and jump in on the on the test right the retest so bam 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 something like that uh but for the most part it does seem like the aussie is quite strong commodity currencies uh sort of holding their own recently uh and continuing to trail uh higher so when we look at the aud and nzd as well against the dollar you can see lots of bullish strength here on these two markets uh nzd usd kind of finding uh some supply up here so going into this week, a couple different setups to think about. We've got the range here. So if you are very bullish, maybe you're buying the bottom of this range. Uh, and then maybe if you are uh, not so bullish, or maybe you, you are bullish, but you want to wait for a breakout, uh, you you know look for something like this. That could be a setup as well. If you are bullish on NZD USD. Now, if I was to take a trade like that, the, the key thought there would be something like this. Like, let's say I do decide to take that trade. For me, it is it's not necessarily chasing because what I'd be doing is I'd wait for the retest, that opportunity to get in on that, right? And then I'd be looking for the run up. And my whole idea would be to keep that stop loss fairly tight, right? In case, you know, price is just kind of faking out, right? I don't, you know, I want to be sort of conservative. So maybe like 30 pips there uh, to the downside, risking as little as I can on a swing trade and then looking for something, you know, that could potentially run a little bit. Because uh, if we were to get, you know, this move again, right? Think about this. We could take that move. We could just measure it and bring it over here, right? That's the thing. It's very possible for a market to do moves like this. And, uh, you know, if you're only setting your take profit like 50 pips, right? You could miss some of the best moves that happen in the currency markets, like these big run-ups on NZD USD, things like that. So for me, it's not about being right all the time. It's about when it when you are right, really making it count and catching some of the best moves the market has to offer. Things like this, things like this, right? Of course, in hindsight, everyone wants to catch those moves, but you'll never actually catch these moves if you're just taking small profits all the time. That's my personal opinion. Feel free to trade however you'd like. There are people who make money doing that, and I respect them as well. But for me, my approach, I like to see this and I say, okay, well, how do I catch that move? I've got to stay in the move. How do I stay in the move? Trailing stops is the way for me. Now, of course, that is not for everybody. And I'm not saying, you know, the thing that kind of stinks about trailing stops is that you take a lot of losses. People, you know, sometimes don't like my style because they see that I take a majority of my trades are losses and break even trades, right? That's not very fun to uh, to experience. But again, it's the only way I can catch the big moves that I catch. So with that said, you guys, all the trades that I share this week will be in the Discord. So uh, for those of you who are already in there, check it out. We'll we'll keep tabs on the one that we're in, that dollar yen trade, uh, et cetera. So before I go, like I said, last chance is uh, to, to get our Black Friday sale. It's this month, 40% uh, off our trade signals, webinars, strategies inside of the group, trading tools, robots, live chat rooms. We've got it all. Uh, and it is really, uh, you know, probably the best offer that you're going to get all year. So with that said, guys, thank you very much for being here. Have a great week. Trade 